Um, thank you. God bless you for following us through this week. We've been talking about God's word. We've been having a series on God's word. And we looked at the first session as God's word as all encompassing, touching from all the aspects and facets and dimensions of our lives. In the second session, we looked at God's word as uh, our key to success. And we saw how God was instructing Joshua. And uh, in the third session, we looked at uh, uh, the innate power of God's word is in, in its meditation. So God's word meditation. And we looked at how do you bring out that power. And um, t today we are going to look at, um, uh, you know, the creative power. You know, God's word as the creative um, agent, the, you know, creating stuff using God's word. Um, and read a scripture, and, and this is, um, and read a scripture, this is Romans, uh, a, a very common scripture that most of us love. This is Romans chapter 10, and from verse 17. And this is what the scripture says. Um, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of God. So faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Faith. Now, before we even talk about so many things, eh? uh, you and I know the power of faith. And Jesus spoke a rapidly about the power of faith. And he said, you don't need much faith. If you have faith as little as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, and I like putting perspective, you can say to Mount Kenya, be moved from Kerenyanga, Nyeri, and Nanyuki, and be moved to Mount Kenya, um, and be moved to the ocean. Faith as little as mustard seed. You can command the mountain from wherever it is, its sitting place, down to the coast. Now, you know, in, in, in you and I, in our human thinking, you're like in a thousand or in a million years, that can never happen, you know? But Jesus was saying, you don't need to have faith the size of the mountain to move the problem the size of a mustard seed. You need the faith the size of a mustard seed to move a problem the size of the mountain. In other words, our day-to-day -day lives are characterized by faith. You know, you set up an alarm going to sleep the previous day. Knowing so well that tomorrow you expect the, the alarm to wake you up the following day in the morning. That is faith. You had no guarantee with the following day. You had no some sort of covenants or agreements with the day. And you're saying the day tomorrow you must come. And tomorrow I must do A, B, C, and D. It's by the act of faith that you set your alarm, you know? Even, you know, I, I think life is characterized by, <laughs> by faith. Every day, every single day is just faith, you know? And um, you, even, even, even driving on these our Kenyan roads, you are so, so sure that this other guy will not be insane to cross over my lane and you are going at 100 kilometers per hour maintaining your lane. And the other guy is also coming at a super speed. And you just, you guys will just pass each other peacefully. That is faith. What tells you that this guy cannot change his mind and <laughs> just uh, enter your, your lane? Now, for me, that is the faith, the level of a mustard seed. So no one can claim that they don't have faith. Because if you have, if in your day-to-day -day life, you've been exhibiting characteristics of faith, you know, including, I love this example, sitting down on your chair without confirming whether, the, whether, whether it has all the four legs so to support you well, you know? Uh, you know, you board a matatu, you board a plane, and in the first places, you, you've not even verified whether this guy actually went to school and passed their exams. But you, you, you board, 
knowing that I'll get to my journey. That is faith. And that is the faith as literal as a mustard seed. It is the level of a mustard seed. It, you know, you, you, you either have no basic understanding, you've not even gotten into God's word to study faith. But at, at, at the basic level, you have some level of faith. Now, how much more this faith that comes by hearing the word of God, how much more of this faith after reading how God used Moses to part the Red Sea, how much more of this faith that comes in my heart and in my spirit after learning that Daniel was actually thrown into the pit of uh, the den of lion and, and, and lions did not touch him. How much more when the faith is built up by knowing and understanding that Shadrach, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they were thrown into the furnace of fire and they did not burn. How much more after reading God's word and my faith has been built up, how much more will the mountains be? in your life. How much more, how much more are we going to move the mountains in our lives? I'm just here to say this, eh? when we read God's word, when we study God's word, it builds our faith. It builds our faith. It builds up our faith. It builds up our level of expectation. We start seeing possibilities. We start seeing that Jesus was able to heal uh, men with leprosy. And we start building faith that there is nothing that Jesus cannot do. We saw Jesus raise people from the dead and he told us bigger and greater things than this shall you do. And we start seeing, okay, so raising the dead is part of our JD and it builds our faith. Praise Jesus. And this is where the, the creative power comes in. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. What you are doing right now, you are hearing God's word. When you study God's word, when you are reading, you know, as you read God's word, it goes to your spirit. You know, it's deposited in your spirit. And that word, the Holy Spirit has a, 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 has a work of bringing it to our remembrance. You know, have you been in situations whereby you are confronted with a situation, you feel like you've hit a dead end, and you are like, oh yeah, okay, I am just here, I am waiting for my end so that my end comes and goes with me. And all of a sudden, as you're seated there in your silence, you feel or you hear something reminding you of the scripture. I will be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. And all of a sudden, you build your faith. All of a sudden, you pick up your mat and you start walking strongly again. And you're saying, if I never went down during that time, I will never go down in again in my life, you know? Th that's the work of the Holy Spirit. So the moment we take time to listen and to study God's word, it goes to our spirit man. And once it goes to our spirit man, there, there comes times in our lives when we are so preoccupied with the issues of life and we even have no that time to study God's word. Maybe we have no even time to pray. Things are just coming and flowing back to back and you are caught up in a situation where you are very busy. You go home, you are very tired, even to study God's word, you know? And what the Spirit of God does in times like those ones, he goes through your spirit and pulls out some of the scriptures that you've been reading, some of the scriptures that you keep listening and reading, you know? That's why it's good uh, to create an environment that enables uh, the growth of God's word. Yeah, so in the morning when there is Mina and Kengangi, Find a way of listening to the word of God. Can you have a way of creating an environment for yourself? Maybe it will just be plugging in on your earphones and just reading through the scripture. And in, even in your tiredness, even in your fatigue, God's word is still entering into your system. It is entering uh, into your spirit man. And your spirit man is built up. And your spirit man builds up faith. And your spirit man now is able to verbalize. And remember what I told you the other day. The moment you verbalize the word of God, it has the creative power. Okay? It creates situations. You know, um, how did God create the world? He created it by the spoken word, by the rhema word. He said, let there be light. 
and there was light, okay? So you're looking at your situation and all you're seeing is darkness. And by the creative word of God, you speak, let there be light in this situation and all the darknesses vanish. You know, uh, how I pray that we as Christians would rise up even in situations like now, even in circumstances facing our country, we arise up and say, let there be light and there shall be light. Let there be peace, you know? Remember when I just say, let there be peace. These are not just mere words. This is God's word in action. This is God's word verbalized. This is God's word spoken, creating and forming situations around us. So we get to speak what's happening. We get to speak. We get to create situation. Ah, is it not the Bible, your Bible and my Bible that tells you that you shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass? How, how then do we have the power to decree and it comes to pass? It is when the word of God is so, so rich inside of us. Paul was writing, I think, to the church of Colossians and he was telling them, let the word of God richly dwell in you. Not poorly, not scarcely, not sparingly, richly, abundantly, densely. Let it dwell inside of you so that what you say, what you speak, at the moment of speaking, you are speaking life. At the moment of verbalizing, you are verbalizing um, the life of God. You are verbalizing the word of God. And as you verbalize that word, it doesn't return to God void. Okay? It doesn't return. The word of God, it never returns to him void. We speak for that word and that word forms. That word creates. That word changes situations around us because it is living and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword. Thank you. God bless you. We'll be coming here again for the last session, and I pray that you're being blessed. Asante.